What is up everyone? Do not even try her. And today we are finally making a new um, scale model. It's been a long while, over a month if I recall correctly. And uh, yeah, I had kind of lost my mojo with building models for a moment and decided to come back with a much simpler um, model just to get back in the hobby. And so I decided to make this Revell Type 7C uh, U-Boat, which will be made into U552 uh, in 1 to 350th scale. So let's first talk about the kit itself. Um, I have my grudge against Revell, especially with the older kits. Uh, this one is not too old, it's from 2009, but... I was extremely pleasantly surprised because it went together flawlessly and the amount of detail is very good. And when I say very good, I mean it. Uh, so this kit is extremely simple, extremely easy to put together. It can be done in what, an hour and a half if you have the courage. And yeah, the paint scheme are super easy to do and very interesting. And overall, a very, very enjoyable kit. So as you can see I have skipped most of the building process of the submarine because it honestly went together extremely fast and there's really nothing much to say, it's so straightforward that there's nothing I can really say about it. However, what I am going to say is what modifications I did to the model to make it into the diorama. As I will be using a wooden plate to make the base of the diorama, uh, I can't, I can't really carve into it, so what I did is cut the bottom half of the uh, submarine right under the, the ballast, the big tubes on the side, and uh, I've basically sawed that off. And since the diorama will simply be the submarine at the surface navigating, I have cut out the two periscopes as when a U-boat is on the surface the periscopes need to be retracted as they're kind of in the way and useless. Let's now turn this Type 7C U-boat into U552. So to cut a long story short, U-552 was first launched on the 4th of December 1940 and is known to be the um, submarine that caused the first loss for the US Navy by sinking a, an American ship uh, at a moment where the US were actually still neutral in October of 1941. Another astonishing thing with U-552 is that uh, when the Allies actually developed the sonar and kind of stopped the U-boats in 1943 by basically sinking them all, U-552 actually survived through the entirety of the war and sunk a total of 30 Allied ships. So, for the painting, I've unfortunately lost all the footage of me painting the submarine, so I'll have to do with an image. Uh, the lower part of the hull and the railings and the deck were all painted with Tamiya XF24 dark grey. The upper uh, part of the hull was painted with XF12 GN grey, again from Tamiya. And the tower was painted sky grey XF19 from, again, Tamiya. Let's now do the weathering. Um, the weathering was extremely simple. Um, nothing much to say about it. I used some orange um, oil paints to create some rust where the, um, at the places where the ballast would uh, fill and uh, push the water out. And for the rest, I've basically darkened out the entire model with a Tamiya enamel brown wash, 
which gave a very nice result if you ask me. So long story short, some rust with oil paint and I used Tamiya and I'm a wash to create a filter. So let's do now what y'all came here for, aka the diorama. The first thing you are gonna need to make this diorama is a piece of wood. You can also use a piece of polystyrene, but the only thing I had available with me was a piece of wood. After doing so, you are gonna trace on the wood uh, the shape of the submarine. Once that is done, I take some aluminum foil and I basically ply them in uh, four and making sure to make as much ripple in them as possible. And you do so over the entirety of the base except over the traced U-boat shape. White PVA glue is used to glue the aluminum to the base. You then do so until the waterline is reached. Also, um, the ripples that you are gonna give to the um, aluminum will decide how heavy your waves are going to be. So uh, if you want smaller waves, make smaller ripples. If you want bigger waves, you make bigger ripples. So what I went for in this case is a more of an in-between. It's not a beautiful day, but it's not a bad one either, so there is waves, but not too big either. Also, keep in mind that the waterline of a U-boat is about the level of the two uh, ballasts that are on the side uh, of the turret. Now that your layers are done, it is time to take everything and put it together. So what you'll do is basically cover your entire uh, aluminum lasagna with white glue. And what you now do is take a sheet of aluminum and place it over the entire base. What this does is create a much smoother result and uh, will very much unify the entire surface. The goal here is to really conform the aluminum to the layers you made under it. You can do that with a sponge, for example. I then cut free the hole I made for the U-boat. Once this is done, I test fit the submarine just to see if everything works properly. So after that, you cover the entire uh, aluminum sheet with PVA glue. Uh, this will act as a primer because the paint will stick much better on the dried up glue than on the bare aluminum. And will also solidify the, um, the sheet, which will make it much more sturdy. Also give it as thin as a layer as possible because if you don't, um, you might get some bubble trapped under the glue and when it dries, it's really not what you'd want. Once this is done, you let everything dry properly. So now you would be at the part where you paint your base. Um, but since I'm a complete and utter moron again, I forgot to film it, so well, the only thing I can tell you is that it's extremely simple. You basically cover the entire base with a gray blue. Uh, in my case, I use Tamiya XF82 Ocean Grade 2 RAF. We are now at the important part where your diorama will really take on a life. So to create ripples, it's extremely simple. You take a sanding paper, uh, mine was kind of rough. You can take a 
lesser rough one and you basically go over the entire thing and you remove the paint of the edges you go slowly not to take off too much but doing so will reveal the aluminum under it and will reveal all the edges of your waves once this is done you are gonna glue your uh, submarine to the base. Uh, I use PVA glue because it glues plastic to wood very nicely. And I don't put much, just enough uh, towards the middle of the model. And I then press it down in the recess. It is now time to create the foam around the submarine. As you can see on this image, uh, the foam is basically present all around it. Um, on this specific diorama, uh, my submarine is not going very fast, so there's not too much of it. So what I'll do is concentrate it around the hull and on the back of the, um, the U-boat. To create the foam, I use some uh, cotton, which can be found in a supermarket or at your uh, local drug shop. And uh, I basically just take some small parts of it and press it down the recess between the ocean and the submarine. So now let's create some better ripples. Uh, what you'll do is take the same cotton that you use to put around the entire U-boat and uh, you're gonna just tear it and just put some small parts over the exposed aluminum that you see, the biggest parts at least. To glue the foam in place, what you basically do is mix a one part PVA glue to three parts water in a jar. You dip a brush, preferably an old one, uh, in it and you basically just apply the watered down PVA glue on the cotton. You do it very slowly, you don't put too much glue on it and you just go bit by bit and you make an accumulation until the desired result is appearing. And now for the final touch, I will frame the diorama in balsa wood. So what you'll first do is trim the rest of the aluminum that's going on the side. You glue some, uh, some balsa wood to the sides of your diorama. And then very carefully with a sharp hobby knife, cut out the excess uh, balsa that's coming off, uh, that's coming off the top. And after painting the borders black, the model was completed.